Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and to another episode on my Porsche 924 Safari. In the previous episode we installed the rear lights and a couple of other things and we also started working on this door. In this episode it's going to be unstructured again. I'm just going to start doing stuff because I still am waiting for the paint to come and fix the paint on the inside of the car. So I can't do that headlining. So yeah, it's going to be a messy episode, uh, but sit back, relax, and let's start working. All right, so the first thing I want to install is install this little grip that holds the, um, hold the uppy bar onto the bonnet so that it doesn't flap around inside here when the bonnet's closed. And um, I wanted to tell you guys that if you go search for this part number on the internet, you will find all kinds of plastic stuff. This should be metal and um, I couldn't find it anywhere until I thought maybe I should just try Porsche themselves. And they still sell this. This is what you need. Do not buy the plastic junk. It will break. Go to your Porsche dealer and get this clip. This was not expensive. I think it was like five bucks or something. So it's worth it. Just go to your Porsche dealer. They still have the right stuff. Um, anyway, so let's quickly get this guy installed and then we can move on. There we go. That should do. Nice. One more job done. Before I continue doing the rubbers on the door, I think it'll make my life a little bit easier if I actually have door handles on this car. So um, I want to start installing the door handles. And I'm wondering if you guys are seeing the same problem that I am, and that is that this door handle is truly in terrible state. And um, obviously I knew this, but um, it looked kind of better when the car wasn't this nice. So I found my friend at Inline 4, and he has given me a nice set of 944 door handles. So that'll be a little nice upgrade for this car. Um, I need to just switch over the barrels and make sure this, this works, but... Um, I've got all I need inside this one, even though someone once obviously tried to get in here with a screwdriver. I believe that the barrel itself is still in good shape, so I should be able to get the blades out of it. Let's quickly um, swap these over and then we can get this guy into the door and then we have a door handle on the outside. It's fairly easy to get the barrel out of the door lock. What we need to do is just remove this little Phillips head screw. And then we need to just pull this top plate off. There we go. That off. This guy comes off. There's a spring that sits here, which is very dirty, so you guys can't see it, but there's a spring. There's the spring. And now that we have the spring out, you can push out the barrel. And just be careful that you don't lose your blades because even though this barrel is toast on the front these blades are still usable and I will be using them in the new lock that I bought alrighty so this is the new lock cylinder and you'll see this one also has blades but these blades I'm going to remove and be very careful guys when you take them out because there are springs inside here that holds them onto the uh, cylinder you just get them from the right side this one goes from that side one two three four five six and seven all right so now this is now a blank lock so basically anything can go in here and turn it you don't need any specific key what we need to do is we need to transfer the blades that are in here into this one in the same order once that is done this new barrel will be coded to the key of the car so this guy comes out First things first, I'm going to clean it. Uh, they're all a bit tough to get in. I see they really need, they need some persuasion. It's probably again the difference between 
old high quality product and new replacements but anyway there we go that one's in All right next two very boring minutes later yes look at that this is what we want perfect now all we have to do is drop the cylinder into the handle like that it's a little bit proud i didn't expect it to be proud let's just double check this what am I missing? Two days later. All right, so I'm pretty sure you guys who wanted to upgrade to 944 door handles will run into the same problem as I have. As you can see, the lock cylinder does not sit flush with the handle, and it should. The reason it's not, not sitting flush is because there's this little black wheel right there. And that little black wheel is stopping the, the cylinder from dropping all the way into the barrel. Um, I'm not quite sure what the issue is. I was under the impression that all lock cylinders from Porsche from this time are the same. So I'm going to see if there are different kinds of lock cylinders. Um, and if there is, I'll get the correct ones. Um, and then I'll have to rekey it again. But at, that means at least for now, these handles are not going onto the doors yet. <laughs> Since we have to wait for new lock cylinders to arrive for the door handle, I am going to start working on this window scraper. This window scraper sits on the outside down there. This is one of the toughest rubbers to install on any transaxle. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Obviously, I'm starting with new hardware, but I think it is worth your while to just buy these clips new because this is the stuff that makes it difficult. So if you get them new, hopefully they'll be better than the old stuff that's in there. You've got five of these clips. Each clip goes into one of these little holes here. And this is what holds this guy in its spot. And if the clips don't work well, then every time you wind your window up, it'll pull the rubber out. Let's try and get this guy uh, installed. Right, clips are in. Now, we try and get this guy into his spot. was a bit of a struggle but she's in as you can see the clip is holding onto the ribbed area on all of these guys like that over there and over there which means she should not be pried out and here on the outside once the window is in it'll push the the rubber into its little area so i think i'm quite happy with the result so the next thing for me to do is to get the rubbers for the runner in there and in here and once that is done, we can bring the window mechanism in and then we can bring the glass in and hopefully we'll have this door pretty much sorted. Right, so now I have most of the hardware in the door that I need, obviously, except for the outer door handle. That'll happen at a later stage. And I've got the window mechanism just loosely attached with one screw. I'll probably release that again once I've got the glass in the door, but I want to be sure that this is in there when I insert the glass. And as you can see, the glass is down here, all sparkling clean. No traces of any dirt or anything left on this glass. 
Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and insert the glass into this door without damaging anything and then trying to get the little runners to go into the mechanism. Once that's done, we are pretty much ready to try and test and wind it up and down, see if all the stuff works the way it should. So the front runner is in. Are both of them on now? Oh, both of them are on. Right. So the glass is in, um, it should be stable, but I still need to install this little runner, so I'll quickly do that. Alrighty, now let's see if I can find a window winder somewhere. I know I have one. Alrighty, let's pop that on there. Let's see if this works. Oh, just look at that. Perfect. I'm very happy with this. All right, so that's a bit of a result. I'm really, really happy with this. You can see that the window on the outside looks really good. It's nicely seated. Everything is working as I was hoping it would. So um, I can now confirm that you can use the S2 rubbers. It works perfectly. Uh, the window slides really nicely. There's no issues whatsoever. I'm not going to install the door car yet. I'm also not going to install the vapor barrier yet. The reason for that is simply because I want to save the cosmetic work for one go once I'm, once I'm ready to do it. For now, I want to keep the mechanicals open. Should I need to adjust stuff? Should I need to get to things? And I'm also not going to do that door yet because there's a, not a lot of space there due to all the parts that are stored there. So for me to work on that door, I probably need to turn the car around. And that's not going to happen with the temperature we have at the moment. So for now, I'm going to continue finishing off this door, which means I need to install the new rubber. And I also need to install the door catch. And I need to install the door light switch as well. Once that is done, this door is pretty much complete other than the cosmetics. All right, so uh, we're back on the door handles. Um, as you remember, uh, these standard 944 lock cylinders does not want to sit flush with the door handle. So um, I asked my friend at Inline4 to send me a set of used lock cylinders that he knows comes out of these. And that's what I've got here on the bench. So let's open it up and see what the differences are between this uh, lock cylinder and the 944 ones that I ordered. So far, I'm not really seeing much of a difference between the tops of them. This looks to be very similar. But I am seeing a difference. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, so they are very much different. 
The interesting thing is that the Porsche parts diagram does not tell you about this because you can see this is exactly the same. There's no difference. The spring is exactly the same. And so is this little, this little arm is, oh, this is not the same. This is not the same either. So this thing has a bit of a lip on the bottom and this one doesn't. And what you can see here is if we look really closely is you can see that this one, this is the one I just received, has teeth on it and this one does not. And if we look at these teeth, they will line up with the teeth that you see inside there. I know it's very small, but uh, these teeth will line up with that, which means the cylinder can slide all the way through. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer these blades into this one and then test fit again. And hopefully then we can get that handle into the door. You can see that she's now fully into the barrel. You see that it's fully lining up and it locks. So this is exactly where we want it to be. So now I can build this up again and we can go put it into the door. One minute, 37 seconds later. Perfect. Let's get it onto the car. Now, so I was about to put these handles into the doors and then I just saw that they were not up to scratch. They did not look good enough. Um, I want them to be better. And that meant that I had to sand them down. They are now in the primer and we will get them painted in 2K uh, satin black. And then once this is all dried out, we will get them back into the car. So let's move on to something else. All right, so while my door handles are outside drying out, it'll probably take a couple of days for me to do all the coats. I am going to fill these voids that are here with my headlamps. And I have already done a couple of things off camera over the past couple of weeks, and that's clean the frames, treat all of this plastic. So what I'm going to do is set you up so that we can assemble one of these light units. I've got some new parts, some new rubber, some new screws. And once that is done, we can drop it into the car. To install the headlights, we have a couple of things that have to work together. You've got these little hinges and the hinges go into here and on this side it goes into there. So there's two of them on each side and there are these little spacer plates, which you can see here, and they actually sit next to the body. So you've got the spacer, then you've got the hinge, and then this hinge plugs into this little area there and also on the other side right there. I've actually never installed a headlamp into a 924 or a 944, so this is completely new territory to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the bumper off. I've got it just hanging onto the mount. It's not screwed in at all because that will allow me to just shove my hand into this wing because I have to get the bolts through from the inside to attach this bracket to the body. Right, so the light is in. You can see I didn't get to insert any one of these plates because it's such a tight fit. So I'm hoping that these guys fit there and that that's a very loose fit, but I honestly don't know. And um, in order for me to get this guy in, I took away this pump, I took away the motor, I took away this bracket. 
Um, it's all now being back, put back into place. It's not been tightened down so that the mechanism can still move without the motor because I need to play with it. But um, that's where we are, and I can show you that it goes nicely down into its spot like that. So the question I have now is, does this uh, light line up once I put the top cap on? But this seems to be working quite well. So I've got the cap down there, so let's get it on and gently see if we can make this thing be aligned. And if not, then I guess I have to hammer a shim in there or in there. I have no idea. We'll figure it out. side is now done so let's quickly move on and do this side and then once that is done my door handles are dry and we can get those off. So we've got two uh, headlights installed and adjusted. I'm quite happy with where we are. I need to do some more work on this one because I figured out what these things are. They are not spacers, they are braces. So you have to put them on the opposite side of the uh, hinges that we installed so that they can protect the body so that you don't have too much torque going through your body because that's very thin metal and this will brace it up so that it can handle the forces being thrown at it when you are driving at a high speed with headlamps open. You can imagine the force that this is doing so i need to do this one again and let me show you what it looks like on the inside you can see that's where the plate sits and this is where the hinge sits and this is the way you should install them the same goes for that side the hinge is there and the plate is on the inside of the fender there so i'm going to get that installed and then we'll move on to the door thousands of tears later door handle installed and it works like a charm very happy but that also means it's the end of the video because this has been an epic amount of work it's getting late on a sunday afternoon and i want to go spend time with my family so i will see you guys in the next episode when we continue working on the safari until next time guys bye bye